con- pro wrestling conquest that George was a part of that as well. Uh, it, 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 you know, you're, man, you are everywhere. I'm aren't anywhere you? and everywhere. Yeah, by design. yeah. There you go. You're uh, like. <laughs> I I don't know why I I I come I go I show up to the show with it was a bunch of the 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 you know crew that I know and and then the, and the wrestlers are telling me that I'm traveling more than most wrestlers and I feel like you're also on that page too so well, you kind of, okay <laughs> so I mean what's the thing so mm-hmm. if you want to make it in a you know if you want to make it in a business that, you know like you know, like one of the wrestlers, shouldn't you, you act like one of the wrestlers? Well, I've never considered my, like, I never, well, one, I In never. In terms of your travel grind. Right, 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 right. Like, but I don't, I don't feel like, I, I, I never felt like traveling was necessary for my grind and expansion of my career because I don't see that I have uh, the trajectory of a pro wrestler. You know what I mean? Well, like, I, like I, I had no idea what the heck my trajectory was. I just know, like, I mean, heck, to it, like, I was like when I first started, there just wasn't a lot of places in Pittsburgh where I could even work. Yeah. So, but also, you gotta make a decision, don't you? You gotta say, because uh, I mean, you could. How many promotions are? How many promotions? Three promotions ran this Saturday in Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, two promote. Uh, one, two, yeah, but, and two was, live was, shows and a one. Taping. There's like, there's like five or six reputable promotions. <laughs> In Pittsburgh, that run on a relatively regular basis, and then three or four really shitty ones that nobody should be talking about. Um, that use pretty much all the same guys. Yeah. So if so you, it's a hy- if you're it's just a like so, you got to make a decision, right? Oh, I don't know why I'm on my soapbox for this right now, but you got to make a decision, right? Of do I want to just be a referee? In George's case, but well, no, that's not your case. But I'm well, just saying, no, that's, your, op- no, that's your option. Well, no, it is because you would be surprised at how many guys are, you know, how many refs are like, oh yeah, I want to wrestle. I'm like, I- I've never wanted to wrestle. You wanted to be a ref. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, look, I was very open my first day. You know, even before I had like my tryout, I was like, look, I am not going to be Kurt Angle. Mm-hmm. Uh, like just you know there's like they want to say there's a spot for anybody well okay i like coming in i was probably like one of the lowest possible threshold for any as close as you could get to anybody <laughs> like um but we may we, we we play with some house money for a while but we're turning it into something yeah so. there you go there you yes. go and and, and 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 you know that mentality you know you're talking with the wrestlers you know hey get out of this get out you know see what other promotions can be you know see see you know pittsburgh wrestling for all the great stuff happening here is not what the world of wrestling is necessarily so but then but you've been doing the travels and everything, right? Um, and uh, the most traveled ref, uh, uh, I think, in the area that I'm aware of. Uh, so, but but so you've been getting around. Of, of course, you were a part of Pro Wrestling Conquest a couple of weeks ago. Yes, and that was actually the middle of a triple shot. Really? Yeah. I Wait, put, that was a Friday. <laughs> I put 1,200 miles on that weekend. Jeez. Yes. Jeez. So the night before, I mean, before that was Horror Slam versus GCW three up in uh, Taylor, Michigan, from the uh, okay American Legion post. I believe uh, I believe our buddy Ash was running that show on the video side, right? Oh heck, I honestly from GoPro. I honestly couldn't remember. Uh, <laughs> I know it's all blur. Well, yeah, but I mean, no, we probably too many matches in hindsight. But I mean, heck, it's still a good show. I mean, I typical mean, indie wrestling. Come on, eleven matches. Though. Yeah. Oh jeez. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, heck, like uh, in one night I got, I mean, just, you can't really complain about anybody on this slate. Uh, in one night you get matches with Alex Shelley, Jordan Oliver, Schlack and Effie all in separate contests. Can you really complain? No. And that was the, that was how the weekend started. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, conquest. It was nice to, it was nice to have the draw back up after the, Unfortunately, COVID kind of had us down with the tag team show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it was still, I think, a hit on this one a little bit, too. I mean, definitely not up to the, the 500 people that squeezed in there before. Well, give, but, but given, given you know, between that and the other unfortunate bit of outside business that occurred, uh, I feel like we had a, we came up with something like, you know, they still, they still came up with a pretty good moment. For Absolutely. Everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, Levi, Levi Everett versus Jock Sampson for the belt was mm-hmm. like, you know, that was the rematch of the one that uh, caused a car crash <laughs> uh, in Charleston mm-hmm. in front of Bully Trap Barbershop. I saw it. 
I mean, then again, if you see Jock Sampson fighting an Amish man on in downtown Charleston, I mean, he'd probably be caught caught oh, in your neck too, right? That's right. Okay, yeah, this is like in the this is in the middle of a this is in the middle of a rainstorm mm-hmm. too, like a fall. This was for conquest. No, this it was, was pretty uh, different. Now this was We've a had this non, conversation this was before. a non canon show, so this was like a <laughs> it's like a showcase of like just all of the most of the like featured yeah, talent yeah. from okay, most of now. the major promotions in that area of West Virginia. So yeah. you had like Gary Dameron's ASW was represented, Pro Wrestling Conquest, Pro Wrestling Inception. Uh, I believe they had some Remax talent there as well. Yeah, the Remax belt was was defended. That was the Remax belt was actually defended in the first Jock Samson Levi ever contest. Um, but yeah, I mean, heck, the first the show even had Ace Austin versus Atticus Coger with the X Division title on the line. Wow! In a, in a ring that was underwater. <laughs> 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 Unfortunately. Holy shit! Oh yeah, no, I I I was I, I felt like a duck. <laughs> I literally felt like a duck. Yeah, it's I've it's never been like you know. I've never been wetter on a, uh, <laughs> on a wrestling show, and that was even yeah. after that guy threw that bottle of Mountain Dew at me. <laughs> one time. So, um, thank you, Kenna. Yeah, and, and of course you, you're talking about Levi and Jock, you know, yes. and that was a show that had Fandango, D- Dirty Dango, uh, Scott Steiner, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Oh God, I'm forgetting While he else. didn't do Steiner math, he did get to call several of your favorite local heels fat asses. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. <laughs> and I popped for it. And he also made everyone aware about how much he hates fat asses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, always a good time down there. Um, but uh, yeah, well. you did work the RWA show this past weekend as a 13th anniversary. Um, you are a relative newcomer to that promotion. Mm, it is not as not as uh, new right? as you'd think. It's actually technically been over two years since I've been there, if you count pre-pandemic. That's true. Okay. Okay. So the first show would have been December 2019. So technically, this was All my right. second anniversary. I still show. consider you a relative newcomer. I feel like everybody's been there for 10 years. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean. How like I'm, I'm making the most of every, every show I get there, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, why mm-hmm. not? No, it, it's it's a good crew. Um, you know, we talked about the crowd there a lot. Um, the uh, the the, the, the most lot... unique sort in Pittsburgh wrestling, likely, is in terms of a collection of people. That's a that's a fun way to put it. Um, so and, and, and I mean, it is the closest thing to a southern audience that you get in this town. Yeah, but with they that, are they are closer to the. It's still real to me than yeah. they are the. Oh, I troll the message boards and I know every single piece of news from so, that you know of so and so. Like, granted, like these are probably more of the fans who might still know the guys more so from the characters on TV than the stuff they're doing, mm-hmm. you know, on social media or who they're dating or what indie shows they're working. Like mm-hmm. that's just you know call, maybe I'm wrong, but like that's just the vibe I get. There is uh, no other promotion that has a near real brawl with a fan more often than RWA. I caught one when I was editing the show from this. Pa- it's not in the show. Well, the, fans, but, <laughs> the fans never move. Uh, for and also, they don't, they don't move for dives never. at all. They don't give a shit. Never. Yeah, every, every, no. Um, but but uh, hey, crowning a new champion, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being the one to present uh, the belt uh, at a 13th anniversary show is not a small moment either that 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 dawned on me that, that mm-hmm. you know like 2022 you know we might still be in the winter but i don't know i feel like things are hot for me right now and i think things are just going to keep getting better as the year goes on and to be such a promotion that i and i remember like you know the roots of rwa were not the greatest for a promotion um like a, there was a lot of yarder stuff that was happening and stuff right and and these were fans that kind of started I mean, their from own my promotion. understanding i can't say like i you know i'm not you know i'm not too versed on the early early history of it mm-hmm. um but I know a lot of guys, you know, I know a lot of guys who've worked there in the past. Yeah, um, I, it, but it's 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 a company that learned and grew into. I, I I still say consistently the strongest over the last ten years, right? Because um, they've done nothing but grow uh, at the seams, and I think the only thing that hits them is COVID right now. You know, uh, it was announced at the beginning because. Uh, that has a a, 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 a a fans that are coming every show and that promoter knows all their names, <laughs> all 300 of them. And Dr. Feelbad could be the mayor 
of West Newton. Or <laughs> on the, he could be a township supervisor for Ross Draber. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure where he lives, but wherever he lives, he probably knows everybody in yes, that river valley. Yes, yes. And he probably knows who their grandparents were exactly what road they lived on and probably what line of what vocation they were ha- they practiced as well he it's, just you know he it's it's a small town yes. it's a small town business that happens to have brian johnson from ring of honor rolling through <laughs> next month shane taylor <laughs> next month shane taylor's coming back yes of course i'm so sad i'm gonna we've had too. you know devon dudley yeah, yeah. um sam beal cody Long. cody deaner mm-hmm. I mean, in the past, Matt Hardy. Like, you never know who's going to walk through the door there. No, absolutely. You don't. Bruce Pritchard was there once. That, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me. Like, no, like, you never know. Like, I mean, I heard some I heard some whispers on Saturday. I'm not going to give anything away. Uh, but going, you know, we might have some fun stuff coming up for the spring and the summer. All right, fill me in since I haven't uh, been there for a bit. Nobody's telling me that on the back channels. Son of a bitch. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those shows it, well, it, yeah, I, I always, I, I, I had this, I had this thing, especially Saturday because there were three shows happening here. The one I was involved in and it was that is a big, I wish I was at every show moment. You know, I wish I could be at every show moment, you know? But, so uh, like I've already given up, not given up, but I've, I've given rise to somebody else to work on. So I'm not seeing what they're doing in person, but I'm loving watching it in post, um, you know, things like that. So, but it's, it's, it's really fun. So you, so, so let's talk about a little bit. You got some stuff going on, of course, uh, uh, because the last few times we've been on you, you of course are our favorite death match, uh, uh, referee. Um, and there's been a little bit of a shift you were telling me before the show in this. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Not that I don't appreciate the niche that is death match. Mm-hmm. By the way, you can say niche around me. I'm not going to dog you for it. I don't know why I said niche, but whatever. Okay. Either way, um, it worked to get me a bit of notoriety, but at the end of the day, you've got to, you know, I want to be known more. I don't, I don't want to be just known as the guy who referees things with glass tubes and chairs and tables and barbed wire. Mm-hmm. I am more than that. I'm capable of more than that. And I'm. it's time that everybody else knows it. Okay. So this so, is you're coming out. This, this is, this, is this, it, is this is this referee George Ross going mainstream? Yeah, why, are we, why, why don't and from instead of deathmatch ref, why don't we try to alter from here on out? Let's alter the branding to try to become special attraction ref George Ross. Special attraction ref George Ross. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait, what do you mean by special attraction? Well, I mean, the match with Brian Johnson and mm-hmm. Daniel Eads was billed as a special attraction. Absolutely. Was it the main event? No, but it was definitely one you were going to pay attention to. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if, if, like, if I can get the brand behind me, then anytime I come out, people are going to have a match they can pay attention to. Mm-hmm. I mean, can't exactly complain about that, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I, and, and there, I mean, yeah, there, there is that bit of been pigeonholed, right? We like, oh, you do the deathmatch stuff. You always see on that. That's the thing you're, that was always on your feed and, and, exactly. and, and everything. So, so that, that's good to see that, that that's good to see that you're expanding your I mean, horizons. But, but, yeah, but even, but even take, even take a, a promotion like Horror Slam, for instance, they are, you know, mostly known for their deathmatch, but I mean, we've had, We've had Trey Miguel versus Tony Deppen before. I mean, like we like we there. There's more than just blood and guts at that promotion. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, heck, we had a triple threat recently with MM3, Trey Miguel and Jordan Oliver. I mean, nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 more than just that. I mean, like, Alex Shelley, like, granted, Alex Shelley had to wrestle earlier on the card uh, a few Thursdays ago because, you know, you if I'm Alex Shelley. I'm not trying to wrestle after some guys bleed all over the ring and have shards of glass that might still be loose. So we did that one a little earlier, but you know, like, you know, they, they've got Silas Young booked. It's, it's just a lot more than, you know, it's a lot more than just bleeding all over the place. That's all. Absolutely. Um, so Ronnie, you, you, you have some referee experience. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, you know, uh, you've never done deathmatch or anything, right? No, no, no. I was wondering if you had any any lines for 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 George here. I know you've run into him a bit over the years. Uh, George is a lot better of a ref than I am. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, good for you, bro. Like, I'm proud of you. Like, I'm mm-hmm. really fucking proud of you. 
So you just keep doing what you're doing. Keep pounding the pavement. And uh, that contract's coming for you, kid. <laughs> I mean, when the grizzled vet himself gives you that kind of an endorsement, it's got to be like, you know, that means it's on the way via FedEx now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, fe- I'll just drop it off right now. <laughs> <laughs> We got a line uh, on the back channel from Chad that says, uh, Kayfabe's alive and well in RWA. <laughs> so, yes, it, it absolutely is. I can't even tell you why. <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it is wild. Um, Revenge Pro's coming up here in uh, two Saturdays. One of my favorite promotions. Um, first it, time for me. First time for you. Yes. Uh, coming back. I know they were one. I think they were coming up like maybe the weekend after everything was shutting down for yeah. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And they have and this and then did not come back in 2021. This is their re-debut. So f- last show since I want to say their last show it was February was, 2020. I think was right? did they have a February show? I want to say they did. Yeah. Cause okay. I was, so I was talking with Daniel Eads in the locker room on Saturday, and I believe like you know he is very, he's very hyped because like the he so you know Revenge Pro February 5th from the Avalon Hotel in mm-hmm. Erie, uh, heavyweight title contest over two years in the making, big time Bill Collier versus the Man of Tomorrow Daniel Eads. Daniel Eads personally, I can vouch he's very. He's very hyped for this one because he's been, you know, he's been waiting two years for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And I imagine Bill Collier's probably uh, in a similar mindset. These two have had a number of contests at RWA, like right around the time that I'd started with the company. Mm-hmm. And if it's anything like those ones, it's going to be money. Mm-hmm. And if it's money, then that means you need to pay your money to make sure you <laughs> see that money. <laughs> We'll be there with uh, we'll have some cameras on hand for Indie Wrestling US. Uh, we we carry them on VOD, of course, and we have the back catalog over there as well. Uh, a lot of great so there's a lot of great stuff. Um, Revenge is great because it's a lot. It's a it's a it's a perfect intersection of uh, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Buffalo talent, right? Um, that you normally wouldn't see kind of come together. And that 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 created some magic between the Bill Collier and Wardlow matches that were happening um, before Wardlow got signed were just tremendous. PB Smooth got in the mix with that. McChesney involved in a lot of that stuff. Oh, PB will be ta- PB will be taking on Larusso after mm-hmm. uh, Larusso uh, got him eliminated from the Revenge Rumble. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good one. And then you also, I think, we'll still have John McChesney versus Jock Sampson. Oh, geez, That's yeah, right. and I think Jock is debuting up there with that promotion too. Yeah. So. Uh, so a lot of good stuff coming up. So what what are your um what's your referee goal for twenty twenty two? Don't know if I have one. Other than just get out there, I guess. I mean honestly, I'm just like, you know, I haven't really been planning super duper long term. I'm at this point, like I'm taking I took a booking in July, for instance, just for the experience. Mm-hmm. Um how, tell me how this sounds. A show on a world on the deck of a World War II troop <laughs> transport. On a, wait, on a troop transport? Yes, I'm on sorry, the what? on the deck. I look. I heard about that show, and I instantly thought a Luger body slamming mm-hmm. Yokozuna, and I freaking wanted it in my life, baby. So I took it. That'll be IPW up in Muskegon, Michigan, Saturday, Muskegon. July. Muskegon. I've been to Muskegon. Yes, this is going to be in Muskegon, <laughs> Michigan. Yes. Oh, I'm so, taking a road trip with you for this one. Bro, what day is it? Ju- Saturday, July 9th. It's going to be a 7 p.m. bell time. Yep. This is the cut. Co- Look, this is the kind of year I'm having. Like, I mean, I like I've already done I've already had a 2022 that like, you know, I've already had some great matches that some people will never, ever have the chance to get at this point. Yeah, it's just yeah. a blessing to keep doing it. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Wait, is SummerSlam in July this year? It was, is that right? I, I have July 30th on my calendar. Is that right? Yeah, SummerSlam is Holy in July. Holy crap. Okay. What the hell? Well, the July pay-per-view was always the random one that they kept changing anyway, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe sometimes Money in the Bank. But well, what was, yeah, because like, well, Money in the Bank, then they move it up to June last year. Yeah, well, yeah, they've been yeah. it everywhere. So, um, also I, got a good card on Sunday or Saturday we could talk about as hold, well. Hold on. Saturday you can hold on to that for a second yeah. because I'm trying to bring up, uh, why can't I go full screen with this? Um, but I'm trying to bring up uh, what a troop transport from World War II looks Bang. like, by the way. <laughs> it's just so you have kind of an idea of what we're talking about. Like, we're, it's, it's a boat. 
<laughs> They're apparently putting a wrestling ring on it. They did it last year. Okay. And I am, I am, ex- and apparently we might have to change inside the boat. You know what? <laughs> I don't even care. I don't even care. It sounds awesome. Oh. I'll be able to tell people I refereed on a freaking boat. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and everyone, it, it'll, and like, everyone at that show should come out to keep paint some on a boat. Well, Just, I mean, considering that, like, there's, so like, so consider, un- unless Jericho, like, you know, somehow, unless I somehow managed to crack AEW by whenever the heck the next cruise is, this will be the closest I'll be able to get to reffing on a boat. So, <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I do, you know, I, I kind of want to go on, the, like, I feel like the cruise is an experience as a fan. That I'd love to be a part of, although just the idea of cruises. I don't know. There's a certain lowest common denominator of wrestling fans that may not want to be around. They have far too the, much money. No, the ones <laughs> who no, the ones who fart and don't shower. And <laughs> I was gonna say the, the ones who think it's okay right now to go on a cruise. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, too. The, well, the ones <laughs> oh, yeah. or the ones who showed up wearing their Austin 316 shirt from 1998. That's Got more pock marks than actual <laughs> shirt left. <laughs> yeah, it's Austin three sixteen, but it kind of looks like Austin six. It's Austin three thirteen because half, half, half the half six is period, gone. Like, yes. <laughs> Wait, did, did we really see this on the on the video? This no, is, I'm is, just <laughs> no, no. But you've seen those fans. I get it. I, I get mean, it. no, but like, let's be honest here. Sorry, we've there, all seen. This. There's definitely been at least one time. Ronnie will vouch for this, especially considering he's probably done enough, enough shows in West Virginia where you may be at a venue and you just smell and you're just like, wow, it just smells to be in this building. Well, I mean, it's a, oh, boy. it's that con funk thing, except you get it every. Weekend. Oh, but no, there's a, it can. No, I'm not talking about the, I'm talking about the B.O. smell sort. Mm. No, sort. There's a specific group mm-hmm. of people and places that you go to that you know they're nasty motherfuckers. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a pungency. Mm-hmm. It really is. Yeah. Okay. Tw- twenty twenty two goal. Okay, if we were talking about twenty twenty two goals, pungency vice. Uh, twenty twenty two. I don't want to take a booking in a somewhere where I'm afraid to take a shit. <laughs> huh. So common common fact. I'm very open about this. I refereed for Black Diamond for a, a solid year and a half. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and anyone who knows that building knows mm-hmm. the only cool thing about it was that Charles Manson once went there in middle school, back mm-hmm. before the Manson family or whatever. So, you know, but like I had a, I had a very simple rule. On Sunday <laughs> show days for Black Diamond, I would not eat or drink for so long before the show because I would not use the facilities in that building now uh, I should, I should a, fo- a follow-up question um have you explored the facilities on the ship i mean they're I mean, pro- not yeah we you know. uh, so th- they're probably in better working order than the black diamond plex built i uh, i, I don't bathroom. know my dad was a navy man i, I no. don't know if you want i don't know if you want to it's we yeah, bobby board, board bobby or pro- some of those um some of those, um, I'm sure there's a porta potty. Bobby, we are. There okay. is no way that we are not are immune from up? COVID from doing shows in that building. <laughs> I mean, well, yeah, to a certain extent. Except for the fact that, like, most of us have gotten COVID that worked in that building. So. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure I black mold in my lungs. Yeah, yeah. Every 10 years. So. Um, yeah, but uh, my favorite would be every every time we'd bring someone new in there, they're like, "Yo, it looks like someone died back here." I'm like, yep. 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 Every sure month. Does. Yeah, I know, Mike. This was a uh, unisex bathroom just because they couldn't get to the other one. Mm-hmm. Where was the other and, one? Uh, I don't know, I'm presume God. there was another one on there the was? more dilapidated there was. size of the of the building. Huh. There I was, would imagine. Yes. I did not explore. Um also there it was, was. I, I believe it was um I believe it was debunked that that was a Manson family school. Oh. That was Manson school. That was because I have I, I brought a historian. <laughs> To, Way to go, to sword. the To the venue once. This I is why believe. we can't have fun. This is why we can't have fun stuff. I'm sorry. Well, you know, it's not like we had to have. We had to give. We had to give people some cool tidbit about why we went there. <laughs> it's not exactly why we had fun there, anyways. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. To, oh, the, to this day, you're still wondering. Or to this day, we're still wondering who the third swashbuckler is. There was a third one. I mean, there there, there was more than three. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> there, there was a few people that had no business being in wrestling. There were like six. So there were at least there had to be close to six swashbucklers. Ronnie, were you a swashbuckler? I was not. Okay. It, I wasn't. I pitch, refused, wasn't pitched for no, you to be one once. It was, and I ah. refused to put that fucking mask on. It this was. Ever they were. They were playing full. I think. Well, they wore full black leotards and mm-hmm. and full body. Had and it was a lucha mask. Well, it was a pirate lucha mask the, mm-hmm. that that apparently hadn't been washed for a while. Uh, After the first week or two, rib. someone took them to get washed. That was the rib. They purposely didn't wash them. And they wanted to torture the trainees by making them wash. Oh. Them. And then half the people that wore them weren't even trainees. And then eventually they, yeah. it turned into a conquistadors thing. And um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. There was, so there was in, a lot of bad ideas in my I head. <laughs> I'm counting how many swashbucklers there were. There was six. <laughs> there were six. There were no, there were at least five that I can think of just off the top of my head right now. Is this including uh buddy and, uh, no, it's not. So there's even more. Holy crap. There's oh, the, t- more the, the team that won the belts has the swashbucklers. Yeah. So, okay. So hold on. There had to be seven or eight then. <laughs> Do the math. Nobody. Right. By the way, all of this is on Indie Wrestling Network. <laughs> yes. If you want to see the swash, the saga of the, of the, how I don't many know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Really want to watch this I don't all. know if the meat of the, st- I don't know if the meat of the angles in there, Sorg. What do you mean? There is it. There is no meat in that angle. <laughs> it's very vegan, yes. Ah, so it says portobello mushroom. <laughs> First of all, portobello mushrooms are a lot Portobello of mushroom of an angle, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> if you will. If you will. Oh, shit. Uh, Plant-based we... proteins. Now, that's what I call hard times, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> We've been around wrestling too long. Um, fuck. <laughs> Man, now I want Dusty Rhodes to cut a I I want to cut a hard times promo about being vegan while traveling the road. <laughs> if, if you leave in a venue at two in the morning and the only thing you see is a McDonald's, that's hard times, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Daddy, when oh. you're in the middle of Indiana and you're trying to eat clean and on your find your fresh roots and veggies and all you can find is old hard boiled eggs, and that's what I call the hardest of times, Daddy. <laughs> This gas station hard boiled eggs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys watched uh, Futurama, but uh, he, had, he had a little problem with the, uh, the tuna salad. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. the egg, the gas station eggs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to transition that into you know what you're not going to have some hard times with? Our friends at Slice on Broadway. <laughs> 